You know, sometimes the morning sessions can be a little heavy because they can be a little lethargic. But aren't you grateful for the Lord's goodness that are new every morning? Uh, aren't you grateful for his mercies that are new every morning? Why don't you stand on your feet and just set your heart and your gaze upon the king? He deserves a glance this morning. He deserves to lock eyes with you. He died for this moment. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. He saw you centuries, millennials ago, and he died for you in this moment to be able to stand in this presence. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we honor you. Glorious King. It's going to be an amazing time this morning, all day long. Stay locked in. I wouldn't miss an ounce of it. If you're watching us online or on God TV, you want to stay locked in as, as much as you can. Let this presence just permeate your house. If you've got to go out, leave it on in your house. When you come back, just walk into a glory atmosphere. It's going to be amazing. Pastor Lou Engel is going to come up and, uh, and lead us in prayer. And I'm just excited about where we're going. Are you ready to pray? Come on, are you ready to pray? Welcome God TV, all that are watching around the world. I dreamed all night long. I dreamed I was with Michael in stadiums with signs and wonders. I, I woke up in the middle of the night just feeling faith for the great awakening. And I, I couldn't sleep, I had to get up and seek God. Lord, we just thank you, God for this Jesus conference, much more than a conference. Lord, let it be the spark of awakening, revival, God. Lord, mighty faith to go beyond where we're at. Even now, Lord, we ask, take us this morning into realms of the Holy Spirit. Take us into a place of revelation. Lay hold of our hearts. We want more of heaven tonight, today, this morning, all day long. We pray that we would dwell in the sanctuary of the Lord, Lord. Jesus, come and touch us in the inward parts. We invoke your presence. Let people be touched and healed. Lord, watching television today, watch, watch over your word, Lord. Fulfill it, Lord. May the speakers come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God. We ask, spirit of revival, overtake us. In Jesus' name, we worship you, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's just continue to press in. Not of striving, but the desire to go deeper. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we honor you. Why don't you open up your mouth and just give him the fruit of your lips? We don't worship for access this morning. We worship with access. He is here. We are in him. By the sacrifice of the lamb, we stand fully atoned, washed, cleansed in the blood of the lamb. Lord, we honor you. Come on, why don't you lift up a praise to him from your lips? This morning, as I was preparing for this morning, I heard him say very clearly, he said, the thirsty will be filled and the hungry will be fed. He said, the thirsty will be filled and the hungry will be fed. How we thirst for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How we thirst for you. Right of life. 
lost. Express what you haven't expressed. Come on. Your gratitude and appreciation, your love and honor, your thankfulness. Just you and him, just tell him that you love him. <laughs> that you need him, that you, that you want him. the last time you just said thank you. Thank you. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. Thank you for your grace and your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your shed blood. Thank you. Thank you that we can lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a loving father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let the bride be thankful. Come on, let the bride be thankful. Uh, thank you. of this soundtrack. You're a part of this soundtrack. You are, you are, you are. You're a part of this soundtrack. 
Can we tell you we love you? I'd be grateful this morning, can the bride? You want our affection, my love, my love, my love, my love. My love, my love, my love. My love, my love, my love. My love. Just begin to bless him. Come on, just a little more. Yeah, just begin to sing in the spirit. That's right.
you just lift your hands to the Lord just as a as a way of yielding your body right now to the Holy Spirit just every eye closed and just give Jesus your attention Lord you're beautiful you're beautiful and faithful and we worship you Holy Spirit blow through this room blow through this telecast everyone watching everyone here filled with the Holy Spirit and help us love Jesus help us love the Lamb now Father I ask that you take us into the depths of the heart of Jesus Jesus name amen amen come on let's give the Lord praise come on all over the room let's give him praise Jesus 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 find someone and love them find a few and love them Hey, John, can you come here, bud? Everyone, this is John Needham. Yeah, isn't he awesome? He loves hugs, so I want any time you walk by John for this entire weekend, I want you to hug him. Can we do that? Huh, buddy? See how much I love you? Come here. I'll be, let me be number two. Come here. Yes, you are. Woo, okay. <laughs> Well, it's going to be a great day. How many of you were here last night? How was that? I mean, you know, you just, sometimes you just sit there and you will try to process it, but you know you can't, so you just discombobulate inside and trust God, you know, just to mess you up and put you back together. And uh, Lou, that was heaven on earth last night. Pastor Randy said, what, what, what did you say, Pastor? Yeah, it was a journey. He said, I'm still rock this morning. And uh, yeah, I mean, what a privilege to be here last night, huh? Amen. Can we thank the Lord for sending Lou and Therese here? It's <laughs> amazing. And uh, you know, part of our culture is, uh, as a ministry, is, is really honoring gleaning from, trying to suck out every ounce of God out of those who've gone before us. And uh, my brother and I were on the flight here while Rachel was praying in the corner for no turbulence. We actually didn't get any turbulence, which was, which was miraculous probably because the, the pilot kept saying, now we're about to hit some choppy air, and we never did. <laughs> so my brother, was, he had the Song of Solomon out, and... He had the, the Passion Translation, which is beautiful. Yeah. But it was hard for me to track the progress of the Song of Solomon because I'm used to reading another version. So I took my Bible out, and we were cross-referencing. And One of the most precious portions to me of, of, of that portion of Scripture is this. When the Shulamite says, and by the way, and I'm sure Brian will touch on this at some point during the conference. I think it will be a resounding theme. Is This is really the time of the bride. The Lord is... The Lord is pulling the bride out of the churchgoer. You know, there's this differentiation that's taking place right now. And so anyways, I love this passage. The Shulamite says, show me where you feed your flock. Where do you take it to shade at noon? And the, the beloved Jesus says in return, look, if you don't know, follow the footsteps of the flock. So if, you, if, if we have a, a trouble drinking from the well ourselves 
a way we can drink is just to find people who do and follow them. Isn't that beautiful? There's no way to miss. But it takes humility to say, hey, I want to sit here until every ounce of God has fallen out of you. And that's what we did last night. Therese and Lou just dumped into us and we shared revival stories and we sat in the back and it was just amazing. And Therese called it the afterglow. And it was like an afterglow. It was just beautiful. And so um, today's going to just get better and better and better and better. So uh, Daniel Kalenda will preach tonight. Brian Guerin's about to preach. And the whole lineup is just going to be amazing. So uh, could I have those? Uh, John, could you? I won't hug you. Could you grab those two books for me, buddy? I didn't do a very good job of this last night. But I want you to all go out and get uh, Lou's new book, The Jesus Fast. So it's easy for me to, to promote this because I wrote the Jesus book and the Jesus fast and the Jesus book belong together, right, Lou? And, man, I was reading uh, through some of the, uh, the uh, endorsements here. L listen to this. O only Bill would say something so swift and so Yoda-like. <laughs> this is Bill's description of the Jesus fast. This is a very dangerous book, period. <laughs> Enough said. Those are the books I like to read. So go out there and get this. We have a resource table out there. It will bless you. And then Brian Guerin. Brian, you can come up, buddy. Brian uh, is going to minister now. In my opinion, I don't know a more Jesus-loving seer prophet on the face of the earth. Yeah. And so he just recently wrote a book called God of Wonders. And we were just discussing, was it over lunch? Yeah. How to find the voice of God in signs and wonders. That God speaks nonstop, and he draws us into intimacy by, uh, with signs and wonders. That's his real aim, and, and there's a voice in those wonders. So Brian Guerin, all of you know him. If you've been part of Jesus Image for, what are you doing? Oh, he's, he's just, I can't trust him, and this, there's always something going on. But one of the joys of our lives has, has been Brian's influence on us as a movement and just as friends and, and brothers in the Lord. All of us love Jesus more uh, because of Brian. And, um, and, um, and, and the, the level of the prophetic that he walks in blended with intimacy is so rare. So I want all of you to stand. If you're watching there at home, get ready. God is about to speak to you. Let's honor Brian. Show him your love, all right? Jesus, so good. How you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, if we can, uh, so we're following. Oh, this is great. We've got a countdown and everything. Um, if we can, uh, we won't take long, but there's a very uh, intimate presence here, you know, and, uh, and you, you don't sense that too often. And uh, so I've just seen so much happen in those instances if you just lean in and see him through encounter. It's uh, such a precious thing. So I apologize, but if we can get the keys back and Tim and just kind of lean into him, you can stay where you're seated. doesn't have to be super spiritual, but just see him. You know, I was really trying to hold it together down there. And uh, like, uh, like Michael said, Jesus is crushing the earth right now with himself in an intimate way. It's so beautiful. He's possessing a people to know him. Intimacy is everything. To love and know him, you know. And uh, so when you sense this presence, man, what in the world? Uh, when you sense this presence, you, you don't want to bypass it. You know, you don't want to move by too quick. I'm okay if my whole session's eaten up. him intimately is everything so just see him now 
you can get on your face, your knees, or lay out, however you want to see him now. David said, I set the Lord always before me. So just see him now. Jesus. go spontaneous to him just sing to him Jesus, you're everything. Jesus, you're everything. Just to love you and know you, Jesus. Jesus, you're everything. Intimacy, intimacy, intimacy. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Jesus, you're everything. secret place intimacy divine grace right now to be with him to know you just to know you Jesus just to know you just to know you Jesus just to know you just to know you Jesus
of the Holy Spirit all across this place right now, even uh, in your homes via TV, divine encounter. God, thank you for intimacy above all things, gripping of people with hunger to know you, your presence and voice above all things to be with you, to intimately know you, to tuck away into the secret place. Prioritizing you over all things. so much yeah so you can um, we're going to try and transition and um, and but if you're with him stay in that place it's much more important than anything I have to say and so but I've been noticing there's this very strong, intimate slant. The Lord's breaking in upon the body of intimacy, gripping people. And uh, to me, you know, I'm a little biased, but that's the highest call in life. The highest priority in all things is to know him intimately. And so we've been publicly seeing this deposit kind of in these type atmospheres. And, um, and I just love to be sensitive to it. That's all. So I know it doesn't make sense to a lot of you guys. <laughs> like... Who's this guy you got up here snotting all over the place and crying and everything? But uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, this you know happens in the secret place a lot with all of us. We just love Jesus, and when He comes, it's just really hard to keep it together. He's so precious, man, and uh, He's everything. And so the secret place is fine, but publicly I wasn't used to it till not long ago. Um, uh, it started. Um, after this this time of fasting or whatever, and I was just being announced in a meeting, and I saw Jesus coming in. I could see him coming in from my right, and I was losing it. And they're, I'm right about to go up on stage, and I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> this is not a good timing, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was kind of happening earlier because I just don't do too good intimately wise. I just really lose it in a in a good way. And so I made it enough to get up there, but right when I tried to greet the people, Jesus is calling. Um, <laughs> the uh, I couldn't hold it together. I began to weep and weep, and uh, a lot worse than now. Thank the Lord. But uh, and and thank goodness they had a Kleenex box in the pulpit, and, and I was just going through Kleenex weeping, and I was like, Why is the Lord doing this? This happens in the secret place, but not publicly. But I just point this out to let you guys know what the Lord's really putting emphasis upon amidst so much more. But he's really gripping a people right now to intimately know him. A lot of people love the power of the miracles, wonders. We do it all and love it too. But, you know, Matthew's clear. You can walk on those things and get to the Lord and him be like, I don't know you intimately. And uh, so I, I, I figured, man, the Lord must be depositing something. Why is he doing this? What typically happens in the secret place in public must be just breaking me publicly to let it loose. That's why I just wanted to lean in just now. And I later found out a Kleenex box right out in the crowd. I know this is getting a little out there, but signs and wonders are really wild. and um, It's fun, though. God's voice is in it. Uh, in that church, these precious people, a Kleenex box, I'm sitting up there weeping in intimacy in Jesus. And he's, it's depositing into the people going through Kleenex. And they found a Kleenex box right out in the midst of the people where it was being deposited full of gold dust. This just happened uh, not long ago. as a wonder of just intimacy and it breaking. These wonders, they're, they're amazing, but I love more so his voice in them. Like, why did he do that? For what reason and, and why? And, and, um, and then I begin to realize he's starting to do it on an intimate deposit level. And I'm okay 
you know, if he wants to let me look, look however, to deposit it publicly because people grip to know him is, is really a dangerous folk. <laughs> and the enemy knows it. And, um, and me and Michael, we talk about it all the time. The core, that's why I love to run with these covenant brothers. The core of who we are is love Jesus. It's everything. Intimacy to know him, to be with him. And then follow out of that place. And that looks so different amidst so many people and callings and, and such. But, um, you know, one of our greatest excitements, if you will, is to hear back from a people that we get all the testimonies back and such of how they're just so much more in love with Jesus. And they just want to be with him. And I'm so much more hungry now. And, and that's what's hitting people. And it's, it's really exciting. So uh, one second, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to look for the gold dust in the, one of the, <laughs> no, but, um, so yeah, just, uh, I tell you, he's really just raising up a people to intimately know him like never before and how that looks for your calling in the person. Ooh, we're losing power here. Uh, Check, check. There we go. Um, but I'm going to move quickly. There's a little bit of revelation I want to share. And, um, but again, on that intimacy, you might want to crank me up a little bit or maybe in the monitors. Uh, how that looks is you'll leave this place. We've seen it in people that typically, you love Jesus. You have your devotional time, but it's a bit of a grind. Well, this grace hits. We've just seen it over and over and over again to be with him. And then you step in and where 30 minutes seem like Two hours, 10 minutes, you know, is, it, sorry, hours seem like 10 minutes. In this greater, in this hunger, it just grips you. Everywhere you go, you're in the grocery store, and like, man, I just want to be with Jesus, you know, and, you, and watch it because it hits in these meetings. It's a grace, if you will, or an impartation. And then you want to lean in and steward that. And, you know, every time you, you sense that yield and follow the Spirit and let Him take you into, you know, deep realms of knowing Him intimately. We were just in a, uh, doing a school, we do these live stream schools in our studio of the secret place. And we do school of the prophetic, school of the supernatural, all this stuff, but I loved it because the school of the secret place, we actually saw more supernatural break out than anything to be with him. These supernatural heavenly noises started coming in. And people were hearing music all over the world and instruments and things we didn't even know was there. And it's heaven really right now backing intimacy in the secret place to lock away and be with him, you know, so. Um, it's really precious, but I'll move quickly, have a little bit of revelation I want to share, and um, but we're good. We've got about 40 minutes. Um, first off, I just want to honor Michael. Uh, Jessica's not coming, or is she coming later? But just Jesus' image, I run with him personally, and uh, it's just, they're as real as it gets to the core. I love Jesus dearly. I, I've run with him for years now, and it's such an honor. And uh, all these other covenant brothers, and, and then Lou, of course, is just <laughs> unreal, man. It was otherworldly last night. I just didn't know what to do with myself in the front row. Me and Mark are like punching each other. No way, dude. <laughs> it's just, you know, did you hear that? And um, and just how you've so rocked our our world over the years. You have no idea. It's such an honor and blessing to be, you know, amidst this group. Uh, I was in the Brownsville Revival uh, Bible College in that outpouring. And we were heavily impacted by you and your ministry. I'll never forget. We, I went to the call New York. I think it was Jason Upton and called Nashville. And we were, as students, Daniel Kalinda, we were all there together. Heavily rocked and have been all these years. And it's, it's really something to watch this merging that's happening right now yeah. with the sons yeah. and the fathers. And, uh, and really, Jesus' image is spearheading this thing in a way that just, uh, we could be here for weeks trying to talk about how heaven's facilitating this thing. It's beautiful. So, um, yeah, I want to jump in quick to some revelations recently that I think are very timely and, uh, you know, important to watch with this awakening we're in that Lou's talking about. I had no idea. Uh, heaven's been piecing some things together, and I'm so thankful you put me back with Lou, the prophetic guys up front, who <laughs> can kind of get into the weird parable stuff and dreams and such. He's probably trying to get us out of the way first. And then, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I love it because I get it, you know. I'm just tracking the whole time. I love the language, the lingo, and how God speaks. Oh, yeah, Starbucks. Jesus loves it. 
And, um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so uh, the, the awakening that, that we are really in, in the progression and the you know, fruition of it, we're going to see more to come. But there's just two main things I want to emphasize more on the back end of what uh, Lou said, but also in housing it moving forward from a recent powerful dream that I think is very timely. Um, but I'll backtrack. I had no idea uh, till just very recent coming here, and then a powerful dream. I got awake. I encountered really last night. I got wakened out of it at 1:30. Freaked me out actually. <laughs> but uh, it was really powerful what the Lord's doing. And just to reiterate on the back end of what Lou said. Um, but in 2011, I was up ministering in Montana. Had no idea that was the Crow Nation. That's why I leaned into Mike last night. I said, "Oh wow, that's." The Crow Nation? I, I didn't get the correlation there. But it's making sense now. So I go into a vision back in 2011 in uh, Montana ministering up there. And we see a lot of wild stuff just in the prophetic you do. I love it. It's a journey. Freaks some people out. But it's a lot of fun. You see all kind of wonders and crazy parables and things. So I slip into this vision where I see a full circled rainbow hovering over the Niagara Falls. And the Lord began to show me how the Niagara Falls is a nature creative wonder in the earth of the final last day awakening that's going to hit the globe. And I know very little. I barely squeeze through school. I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box. So I got to look this stuff up. I don't know what the Niagara, I don't even know where it's at. You know, I'm like one of those guys. <laughs> I remember I went into a vision of South America and I thought I'd need to learn Spanish, but I was actually in Brazil. I was like, oh no, that's Portuguese. I was like, you know, just... It's just, it's just my world. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so I see this, this rainbow, and the Lord begins to show me how the Niagara Falls is a three-headed waterfall um, up on the border of America and Canada, right on New York and Ontario. And it's a wonder created in the earth of the last and final day. I begin to look at mo more into it, but basically, yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. He began to show me that it was a... A sign of the final out, you know, that would hit the globe in this northwestern continent, you know, from Canada, the connection. Sometimes we see boundaries and people and passports, but heaven sees land masses and people and, and how it's going to birth and touch a globe. So this whole, you know, full circle rainbow, this whole bit, I'm like, wow, let me, I just share, I'm just a messenger, share what I see. Get in this church, it got ridiculous, presence came in, share this vision of Niagara Falls as this, you know, latter-day mark of an outpouring coming into the globe, a three-headed, which is the number of the spirit waterfall, deluge hitting into the earth right on the border of Canada and uh, the U.S., these two continents you watch. They're going to be used powerfully to touch the whole globe. Final great awakening. Share it. Heaven broke in. We step outside in the parking lot. This major, uh, it took over the whole city. You can see the full thing, two double rainbow which was basically the full circle rainbow, you know, cut in half. If, if, if heaven could have done a full circle one, that would have been really crazy. But, uh, but it was a confirming atmospheric wonder of the word, right? A full double rainbow is in the parking lot after we share the word of that day. I go to sleep that night at the pastor's house. Uh, it was great and all this stuff was happening. But I wake up that morning. He's like, Brian, you're not going to believe what that next morning Elijah's list. Again, this is 2011. So I had forgot about it until heaven just reminded me. Um, he goes, you're not going to believe this. Some major, credible, uh, notable prophets on Elijah's list had just released this word about Niagara Falls. It's the last day sign of a great awakening and all this stuff. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He's, he's, we're freaking out, blah, 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 right? So I go preach that night and did not realize this man wasn't even there the night before. And this is uh, all going to tie in together. Um, in the presence, you could feel it shift in the room really heavy. So I just stepped off of the whole sermon thing and just let heaven come in. We, wonders begin to manifest, and we just started leaning into the glory. Well, this man on the aisle, very well-to-do businessman. I mean, he was dressed up, not your spiritual manifest type guy. Uh, he had it together, you know, sharp iron pocket and just sitting there on the aisle minding his business. And I just encouraged him. I could sense it shift in. I said, begin to lean into the Lord. Something's going on here. And I begin to watch him. So he just kind of slightly leaves, lifts his hands up. He's worshiping Jesus the best he knew how. And then I saw his countenance change. And people were starting to get rocked across the place. The spirit was moving. 
But all of a sudden, I see him. He just fell out into a trance, a vision, you know, and, and no, no catchers. This is not some set up thing. And boom, he falls out flat into the aisle and goes out. We lose him. And I go, man, what's going on? We begin to lay hands. It was powerful. Well, later he comes up freaking out, telling me, he goes, I've got to tell you something happened. I was here, but I wasn't here. And he, he didn't know how to explain it. He had no lingo for this. And this is another thing I want to pray at the end. I'll move quickly. But we're also seeing divine encounters I mean, crush people right now in a good way. I mean, amazing things that you can only fathom. Biblical proportion encounters. It's an atmosphere. Heaven's just moving rampantly. Deep intimacy to know him, but then out of that place, encounter and just taking over the globe in so many facets. Evangelists, prophets, apostles. I feel authority now, man. There's a merging of the fivefold. The denominations are falling down. Uh, heaven's moving very fast. Glory to glory. And he can go as quick as you'll yield and posture to him. Uh, but anyway... So he goes, I was here, but I wasn't here. Uh, and I knew he had went out into a, a vision. Because a trance, uh, Acts 10, your conscious is pushed aside. You usually don't know where you're at. You're in the vision. Then it unfolds and you come back conscious-wise. But he was in an open-eyed vision because he started as conscious. He knew he was in the room, but he goes into heaven and he sees this gold being poured down his throat. And he didn't know have a grid for any of this. He's just, uh, like, I'll tell you lo locally what he was. We found out later. He says, all of a sudden, I got taken in the spirit, and I was in Canada. We are in the U.S., up in Montana, and, and I had, he had no idea what I preached the night before. Wasn't even there. Had no clue. It's like the residue in the atmosphere of this word of these two continents, and this last day outpouring is merged, and he just slipped into the residue of it, and God picked the most unlikely guy. He goes to Canada, knows the lady's names, talking to her, ministering to her, and this whole connection of the glory that had been poured into him. That's why it went into his throat. You have to interpret these things. And then to release it in the correlation connection of, of both. Well, uh, I had to keep laying hands on people. I didn't get to hear the whole story. But he cornered my friend later in the bathroom. He was so excited about it, trying to finish telling the story. And uh, we tried to get it on video, but we later found out he was a local analyst in town, like everybody knew him. He was, you know, he, he didn't want to be seen on, on camera. Which two analysts, they're very analytical. They're, they're not spiritually bent, you know, and it was beautiful to watch heaven take him into it. So I, I knew something heavy was on it, the word. It, it, others had confirmed it. Elijah's list, the, the rainbow wonder and all, taking the sky out to both continents, and it was really powerful. That was that, 2011. Sometimes you've fore foreshown things way in advance. I forgot about it. It's been years. We're 2016 now. Well, leading up to Azusa now and all this that's been going on, heaven's been just, all, so much stuff is going on. It's out of hand. A recent dream, I, I'll try and stay with just some of the main ones. But I, I was in a dream, and I caught, this one too is going to sweep a major harvest. Some are renewal, some are revival. Some, you know, this one's bringing about a great and final harvest to the awakening of the church, but also the law, souls like we've never seen. That's why this evangelistic merge is coming. And uh, so I go into this one dream. This is all just building. Catch a fish, big fish. Really excited about it. Love fishing. <laughs> and uh, I'm pulling it in. And then right as I was, the spirit of the Lord in the dream told me, leave it in there. So I left it. It was swimming around by the boat. And then the largest, just ginormous dinosaur type fish you could ever fathom. It, there's, you can only see one of these in a dream. Bit onto that fish. And then I pulled him in and came out of the dream. And the Lord told me, that right, right now, the fish we've caught and currently are wa working with are the harvesters for the final harvest. And that's what's happening around this final harvest that's being set up. And um, so we fast forward. And here recently... Uh, the Lord's been, even leading up to this conference, taking me back into that Niagara Falls thing. And he says, this is that that I spoke of to you back in 2011. It's here. And I'm telling you, you mark my words, Canada is highly connected. It's the, God sees it as one. Do you remember 95, Toronto and Brownsville hit at the same time? 95, I was in Brownsville. But heaven sees it, and it's going to have a landslide of awakening that hits the globe. And right now, we are in it. We're in it. I saw recently Jesus sparking rocks over Kansas City. There's something about to break out there. He was starting to fire rocks like old cavemen would. It's probably tied in with Mike and them. But, um, but so um, anyway, I, I go into this uh, recent dream. I'm getting ahead of myself. But the Niagara Falls, I, I, you know, the Lord begins to remind me this is that that I showed you back then. And I begin to look into it more and find out 
You can look it up on, on your own time, but there's three, a three-headed waterfall, and it is the combined largest waterfall in the, in the world. Niagara Falls, as far as water flow and pressure, it is, it is a wonder in the earth created for the last times. Three-headed, one of them's named the American Waterfall, which is obviously the one on our border in New York. One's the Horseshoe Waterfall on the Canadian side. The other one's named the Bridal Veil of all things in the three-headed outflow, right, of this three, the number of the spirit and the inflow of, of the, you know, Niagara Falls, the bridal veil and heaven's intimately tying in the bride right now like never before in this whole thing while capturing a harvest. And, um, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the one dream, though. There, there's so many going through my head. I'm jumping ahead of myself. But um, into Seymour and then... Um, I, I may share that one, and then the one as night of Azusa, but um, yeah, that, that's how we need to house it. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, anyway, I'm drawing a blank, but basically the one, okay, I'll go to Azusa now. We're there um, the night in the hotel uh, before it's starting. We're all there where the speakers are at, and such an, that was an epic, unreal event. Never seen anything like it in my life. It was unreal. I don't know if you guys saw the picture of the rainbow that manifests over the American flag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a full-blown. It wasn't the arch kind. It was like a straight beam rainbow that got caught over the American flag at the stadium. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, just having, you know, really breaking out in these crazy uh, ways. But so that uh, I come out of a dream the morning of Azusa Now in the hotel. We're all there. And uh, I slip into it. I I'm hesitant, man. Seymour. Because back in 06, the 100 year revival, Seymour came to me. And it was very powerful. I, I may touch on it if we need to. But this is more housing what we're in. We we're so in it right now. And um, to confirm it. But basically, yeah, about 4 a.m., I, I come out of this dream the morning of Azusa Now. And I see. Uh, this father and son fishing. Everything around this awakening has been very harvest-like. Catching the harvest and the souls and the preparation for it. And uh, I see a father and son fishing. This is at Azusa now waking up the morning of. In the 100-year mark, 2006, Azusa Street, Seymour came to me and told me that basically the sevenfold spirits of God are a must for us to house with the next one coming. They lack two of the sevenfold spirits out of Isaiah 11. And that's what, how Azusa, the original, dwindled. Uh, I'm from Louisiana, uh, William Seymour from there, he came to me and it was powerful, but fast forward, 10 years later, same thing, the, the uh, anniversary, and I see a father and a son fishing. Well, this, the son of all things catches the fish, you would think the father would, but the son, young, hooks into it, starts pulling it in, and as it gets to the bank, they both realize this thing's way too big for the son to pull in. So the father, this just happened the morning of, in uh, wherever in Los Angeles we were at the Azusa now. This is very key for moving forward because we're in it. We are so in it right now, I'm telling you. It's in, in the Niagara Falls thing. Um, that's, oh, yeah, uh, you know, because I'm trying to do it orderly, but my mind's hopping all over the place. But basically, also, uh, before I forget, I saw Lou, I saw your face superseded over Ontario. There's something up with that right at the border, that, that Niagara Falls I could see your face, super, it was like superseded, transparent over Ontario. There's something really big there with the Niagara Falls. And it hitting right now is a wonder. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm remembering some of it now, sorry. <laughs> Prophetics, man, it's a journey for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you don't want me teaching, man. If I get in order, we'll, we'll lose everything. So uh, yeah, so in the Niagara Falls, the Lord's like, he's beginning to remind me. And then I, I saw Lou's face superseded over Ontario. There's something really big going on up there. It could be literal in the region, but also spiritually for sure. That's a wonder up there. And then he shows me of all things, uh, the, the wheat thin, I think they're called. They're, uh, no, Triscuits. That's what they are. It's a cracker. You guys know what those are? I don't even eat carbs. I don't do carbs, but <laughs> that's what it is. So in the midst of talking about Niagara Falls, I'm like, man, and again, the, the parables are a lot of fun. They're interesting sometimes to other people, but, um, you know, the Lord asked Jeremiah, what do you see? I see an almond branch, and it meant something. You just see parables. So he starts showing me this Triscuit, how it's the wheat. Again, these intertwined. It's the body of Christ coming together, denominations falling, all the fivefold merging, and they twine together for the wheat to harvest, to sweep it through, right? 
So I look it up, lo and behold, man, I wish we could zoom in on this or I should have thought ahead and got it up on the thing. Wheat Thins originated, it was created in Niagara Falls up there, the very city. Yeah, Triscuits, sorry, yeah, Triscuits. Wheat Thins, I may need to go on a diet or something. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Triscuits too. Um, and if you look at the original box, can we zoom in on the camera and get it up anywhere? Probably not. Maybe for God TV, huh? Yeah. So, I'll hold it real still. You got that or you need more lighting? He got it. I can start passing it around, but Triscuits, the original box, has the Niagara Falls deluging in on the Triscuits. How crazy is that? <laughs> yeah. You can pass my phone around. The password is 2929 if you lose it. So, <laughs> that's Deuteronomy 2929. Yeah, the secret things belong to the Lord. That's why you password it. But uh, those secret things revealed belong to you and your children. So, um, But yes, yeah, so I'm like, unreal, what's going on? And he, he, it's this whole new wave. And that's, again, just to reiterate, the fathers and the sons and what the Lord's doing here, spearheading a whole denominational breakdown. Who cares, man? I, you know, I just keep it... I'll have pastors, we were talking about the other day, from other denominations hating on us, and I just love them anyway. I love what they do, you know. I love you. You may not love me, but I love you, man. I love what you talk about and everything you do. And, um, but denominations and the fivefold working together, we've been picking up on the evangelist prophet thing for a while now. Heaven's getting very specific with the harvest, and that's where the evangelist and the prophet together come into play. Evangelists can just go broad and start sweeping the sickle, but the prophet, it gets more honed in. And it's very purposeful. It's, it's, you know, it's like a heat-seeking missile, and the harvest is, uh, it's a lot, you capitalize a lot much more. And so, um, yeah, he began to show me this whole thing with Niagara Falls again and saying, this is that, this is that. And, and I saw Lou's face superseded around Ontario. This is the one I told you about. And that's why America, uh, you know, and I'm not biased by any means, it just happened to be from here, but the West continent, the U.S., you mark my words, and Canada, they're tied in for the last and final great awakening that's gonna just sweep the globe and bring in a harvest like we have never seen. And it will be really stamped by a merging of every denomination you could think of in the book. Fathers and sons, sons and fathers and daughters and mothers, it's, it's the wheat tins, it's the harvest. It just twined in all together. It's the only way to get it done. And, um, and it's gonna be a deluge, it cannot be stopped. It, the, the biggest one in the earth, so in this dream, the son, when it gets to the water, they both realize the father's got to pull it in. The son didn't have the strength to pull in, but he caught it. This next wave, the, I'm telling you, the, the awakening that we're in now, but we, we know sometimes it needs a, a manifestation, if you will, to see. There it is. You know, I was in the browser revival. I saw it. It's undeniable. And there's already pockets breaking out in the earth now. But, um, you know, w when you see it, you'll realize the son's, don't have the strength, the experience, if you will, the governing ability and all that. We need the fathers to pull it in. So the father hurries up. They don't want to lose this catch. This is the morning of Azusa now. Grabs it with his thumb, which is the apostolic, the fatherly nature, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Pulls it up, and it was gargantuous. His mouth overtook the whole thumb, and I knew it was ancient. I knew this catch was ancient, had been long needing to be caught. And it was massive. And so the father, and this is just to help us moving forward because, you know, we want to sustain this thing. It's one thing to be like, praise God, it's here, and press it in, recognize it. That's huge. But then sustaining it's another. It's a must. We've seen them come and go in the past. I was in Brownsville when it fizzled, and, you know, and that's okay. But heaven always intends to form a habitation and rest and remain. The spirit came upon Jesus to remain. And not lift. That's why Seymour, he was distraught in this dream, man. He came up to me. I'll tell you, we got plenty of time. He, 06, 100-year uh, anniversary, he came up to me. He goes, had I only known, I was just confused. And I could feel his emotions on me. It was a supernatural, I could feel it. Like Daniel says, I was in mourning for three weeks. Sometimes you, you supernaturally are imparted and you deposit emotions. You don't know where they come from. And uh, he comes up to me, the gray in his beard, and I'm just like jaw on the floor. This is William Seymour. You know, I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Can I touch you? You know what I'm saying? And uh, these generals, Branham, all of them, I study them. I love them. And he comes up to me very, very distraught. And he just looks at me, and he shakes his head. He goes, had I only known. He said, I was just confused. 
this is parabolic, he turns to a slot machine, ancient, like an antique from his day, pulls the lever, fruit numbers start spinning, we all know, you, all you guys, we know you gamble, no, I'm just joking, <laughs> but you know what I mean, the slot machines, and uh, numbers, and it starts slowing down, and I knew, like I know my name, it was going to stop on 777, which is three is the number of the spirits, the seven spirits of God. And right before it stopped, it got so close, I came out of the dream. And the frustration that I didn't get to see the fruition of it, I cannot convey. I was begging God, lift this. It was on me. What he was wearing was on me. And then thank God, the spirit of wisdom and revelation came to interpret the dream and to unlock it and lift it. And the spirit said, this is what we're to walk in. It's huge in, in housing this awakening that we're in. And you'll start seeing very rapidly. Uh, in the earth, the, oh, there it is, there, the fish, you know, we know the atmosphere, we know before heaven what's triggered and shifted, hands down, but the actual, you can point to a place, and the manifestation of it, um, they're here, and they're going to continue to increase, but, uh, you know, the spirit said, you were looking into his day, and that's why that the slot machine was an antique, it was about 100 years old, it was a 100 year anniversary, 2006, he says, they were very close to seeing the fullness of the seven spirits of God. It was slowing down. It was so close. And then I just missed it. He says, you were looking into their day. And that's why he said two of the main spirits out of the seven spirits of God they lacked were the spirit of knowledge and understanding. Had I only known, I was just confused. If you're confused, you don't understand. Had I only known the spirit of knowledge, and they're massive. A lot of us want the spirit of might, power, miracles, wonders. Yeah. But revelation Counsel, understanding, most of the seven spirits are revelatory. Spirit of knowledge, wow. spirit of wisdom, wow. spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel. And if you lack those in this next awakening, the enemy will come in from that angle and pull it that way. You, they own the spirit of might, glory clouds coming in. He put his head in a box, miracles galore, tongues, you know, Holy Spirit. But the simple things that are really profound of like the email list and things that started getting pulled to, to help, help it fizzle. If you have the spirit of knowledge and understanding, you, you're, you know, you, you're having a weak links. And so um, this, this is still on me. And the spirit said, you're looking into his day. They were very close, uh, but they missed it. And that's why he was distraught. But then the spirit said, but your generation will see the, f the fulfillment of the seven spirits of God. And it lifted and there was great joy came in. You know, it was like, man, it was so powerful. This was 06. Yeah. So. Fast forward 10 years later, just at the Azusa now, I'm going into this dream. The father, this is key to, to watch in housing this thing, because God's very interested in much, uh, so very much in where we've gotten to. In this, it's, um, it's epic, historic, literally prophecy being fulfilled from age old. It's, it's unreal. But also then housing it moving forward, looking ahead so we don't lose another one. The father picks it up. The, the child caught it. This young, the younger generation is going to catch it. Mark my words. And I love that about the fathers. They don't care who catches it. Let's just get it. You know what I mean? And the, and the sons are like, "Whoa, this is fun anyway, but I need your help. And that's, the fathers and sons is going to be crucial in this, in this next awakening and move. The tandem cooperation of both. The father pulls it up, but then the father urges the son quickly, get a picture, hurry up. There was an urgency on it. He was, he was coaching the son, hurry up, get a picture, which speaks of, in dreams, sustaining. Once you have a picture of it, it's forever. It's permanent. It's habitation. And the sun, which this is not going to happen, but it's how dreams work. They're insightful for us to know not to let it happen and pray, you know, in, that, that we, uh, we co-work with the sons and the fathers. The son slipped around and, and, and played around too much and didn't jump on it like the father did in this dream. And phew, the fish got away, got in this water, and a snake came alongside. I'm just telling you guys, I'm just the messenger. Swam off with it, which has happened in every revival in the past. I was in, I was in Brownsville. I saw it happen. Uh, Azusa, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I'm not going to start naming names, but, the, and it's not going to happen. It's how the Lord speaks. He's very loving and kind this way. And again, just uh, warning and encouraging and insightful of what we must have in this one to sustain it. You follow me? We don't want to lose another one, guys. This thing was beautiful, and I love to fish. <laughs> if, if I could somehow let you see it, it was huge, ancient, a prized possession. And the father had, had the strength, the apostolic oversight to be able to pull it in sustain it, house it, coach the son. So the son caught it, but he needed the father to pull it in and sustain the thing and coach him in how to sustain it. What do I need to do? 
And so younger generation, even on TV too, as we see these hit and you're gonna see pockets break out and continue momentum, um, we have got to have the fathers. That's what I love uh, Lou talking about last night, like their ways and what they foreran for us and paved that there's no new way. You gotta do it. You, fasting, we can't just ride the wave of what they tapped into for us. We've got to follow their, their method. And if they say do it this way, we do it that way. And uh, man, I feel I, something just shifted in here. Uh, but uh, what in the world? Uh, so last night, and, and I'll wrap up quick, we got like 10 more minutes. Um, uh, I went into this dream encounter thing, which is also what's going to be very, very key and paramount with this awakening that we're in. And, uh, but just to, to really let it land, the sons, mark my words, the younger generation is going to hook it. It's going to be caught, so watch for it. And it's here and already happening and going to increase. But sons, we've got to have the fathers and the fathers to the sons. And it's the whole, it's the whole Elijah thing, the forerunning of John the Baptist and ushering in Jesus. And so uh, last night, man, I feel the presence, bro. Something shifted. Um, uh, I, I get awakened out of this dream kind of encounter thing. It was uh, actually really funny if you just saw me because it freaked me out. I saw... Um, oh, we got Siri going on? Is that supernatural? We have phones do crazy stuff in meetings. It may be a, a wonder, but anyway... Um, <clears throat> um, we, we have a studio that uh, we, we just broke down literally two days ago because we're moving to a newer building. Uh, we're expanding. And uh, the Lord, I love his ways. It has three kind of rustic backdrops. Some of you may have seen it. Uh, but three folding uh, backdrops for just decor and, and what have you, studio. Well, we were just breaking it all down to get out of there. We're transitioning. And so me to remember what panels hooked together and went which way, I just spray painted quick. We had it in the studio, a number one on the first panel, number two on the second panel, and a number three on the third one. Well, this literally happened in the studio. The movers were, were getting shifted around and such. Well, somehow the third one got loose, and they're heavy. They're big eight by eight, solid wood, rustic. I mean, they have weight to them. It got loose and came down and crushed. It broke a ladder, crushed this table decor we have, which is fine. We, we didn't need it really, but it, it, it crushed this whole thing. And I was like, oh my goodness, I thought it hit, a, hit one of the movers. And that was that. Didn't think anything of it. Move on, we're fast, we're busy. We're going to fly out here the next day. Well, last night, 1.30 on the dot. I'm still trying to figure out what that is. Why 1.30? If any of you guys know our date or time, I don't know. I know Hebrew calendar 1.30 is May 8th. I get spoken to off that a lot, but um, nevertheless, I in this dream last night, I see that third panel coming down on the earth, which is the third great awakening. And when it hit, man, I tell you, it freaked. I came out of my bed, starting to already start swinging. I'm telling you, it freaked me out. It was an encounter. I know dreams and I know encounters. And there was a sound wave, a shock wave that hit. It was in the room with me. And it fell, and what it is, though, I'm telling you, this paramount in this third awakening hitting the globe is media. That's our studio panel. I know how God speaks. So media is absolutely must, and that's how it's going to hit the globe at a rapid rate and pull in the harvest. And that, third, that was the third panel, the third great awakening is going to smash, man. You, I'm, I kid you not, I was in my bed like, thank God nobody was in here. I was like, ooh, I came out ready to like, start fighting. It freaked me out. Boom, it hit, and the sound wave crushed the earth, and it was such a real encounter. I came out of a dead sleep with my, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's just, I was ready to start swinging. It freaked me out. So my natural conscience had come in. And, um, but that's another thing quick, and we'll pray. I want to release, uh, again, intimacy, divine encounter. But again, just reiterate on the backside of, and I know there's something I'm forgetting. If not, I'll tell Michael. But with Lou, I know Ontario, there's something up with you guys in Nicaragua. Some other words, and I was really key with you guys, I saw. Um, yeah, some other things, if I remember. Uh, oh, yeah. As Sons of Issachar, I saw myself signing my watch and giving it to Pastor Randy. I'll probably give it to you for real because that's how the prophetic works. But um, it's signs of the times in Issachar hitting you guys and wonders. I know it. When I sign things, it's always my books, and they speak of his voice and wonders. And a new realm of wonders breaking out to know his voice and his glory. It's the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. A lot of us get weird about wonders, but it's, it's the knowing of his glory. It's his voice. It's intimate. We've got to know it. It's just increasing in this day. 
but it's also a signs of the time. It's a play on word with you guys. It's a car thing of knowing times and seasons, but wonders as well. Uh, Nicaragua, some other things, back pain being healed. Uh, we'll just release that in the glory when we pray. But um, the main thing uh, was really, yeah, just to reiterate the, you know, the atmosphere, the media is crucial with this awakening. So you guys too, and, and across TV, you guys know it got stirring you in your camp. Do get cheapest cameras you can, whatever, hook up to live stream. Media is massive. It's how God's going to sweep the globe. That's what hit the third panel. Boom, and there was a sound wave that hit all over the earth. And, um, and the sons and the fathers working, the co-merging, denominations falling down. Let those go. That's useless. It's Jesus. I mean, if you don't agree on something, then go to the next thing that you do agree on, you know. I love them all. Yeah. Uh, so let's pray. We've got four minutes and just release the presence of divine encounter. Taking you guys, and there's some more testimonies I was wanting to share, but heaven's doing some amazing things in the earth, you know, and just, yeah, to reiterate on the back side of what uh, Lou said, it's here, it's now. And, and the, the Niagara Falls, I had seen back when this double rainbow manifest, guy gets taken in the spirit to Canada, connecting both, and so forth and so on. I knew by the presence and wonder and encounter that was tied into it, it was big. Prophets confirming on Elijah's list, I, I just didn't know, and I forgot, to be honest, it's been five years. The Lord said, this is that. It's here now. And that's a wonder as you mark more as a North American continent, Canada, Canada and the U.S. Alone, uh, together as one. The Lord sees it as one mass. It's going to hit this third great awakening, break out substantial and tangible, and then hit by media and cover the whole globe rapidly and pull in a harvest. All of them lately have been fish-related. Harvest souls are going to pull in like never before. And that's where these evangelists come in, the prophets and evangelists, very specifically stadiums. Um, yeah, man, I'm just going to keep going. But let's pray, uh, maybe some keys, and, and you can stand. We'll just receive from the Lord. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Lord God. Yeah, actually, actually, if we can, I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, I'll pray quick. But if, you know, in a second, just because of the father, we needed the father to sustain the catch and the, you know, the fish. If, if uh, Lou could come and pray here in a second and just whatever you feel led uh, with this, this word is confirmation. That the, the sons and fathers would work in tandem, and cooperate to house and sustain this thing. It's here. It's going to, pro the progression and increased fruition of it, you'll see clearly. But then we work together to come into the fullness of the seven spirits of God, but also the housing of the thing, the picture, the permanent abiding. Yeah, so if you don't mind praying as you feel led. Even, even as you're preaching, uh, even at, uh, at Azusa, my son at age 13 stood as that Nazarite John the Baptist and he stood with me at, Na at Nashville launching every home for Christ from the John the Baptist to the Jesus movement the father and the son were linking together for the harvest that struck me then paramount did you pick that up what I shared yesterday why did you say paramount because of the paramount pictures it wants to reveal the lamb worldwide in stadiums across the world this movie I, how many of you feel the prophetic spirit i just sat there and i said god i need to sit under the prophetic it does something inside of me so deep and so strong and so god i just say god i i i felt like god where paul came saw stadiums being filled in Orlando and in Florida. I'm saying that what is going on in Orlando is a part of that statement of stadium Christianity, that the stadiums of America, something's going on in December with the prophets, the fathers, the Bill Johnsons, the young guys I've been feeling all day long. You're the answer. This young generation of the answer of a prayer that took place, if I could just share this, it was in 2009. I went into a 40-day fast. I was going into a 40-day fast. And I had a dream right before I went into it. We're going into the woods to fast for 40 days. And I had a dream that my belly was being operated on. And I woke up and I said, God, are you saying to me you want me to be a Daniel? 
to fast and pray for the shifting of eras and seasons. I got a word from a prophet that this 40 day fast is about the double portion sons that is coming. This is your Elijah fast to release the Elishas into the double portion signs and wonders. I'm in the middle of that fast on water with my friends in the woods. And this prophet lady, Julie Myers, emails me and says, I had a dream last night. And in the dream, I saw that you were fasting, but you were sleeping in this place where you were fasting. And in the dream, five angels came into your bedroom and operated on your belly. And they took the book of Daniel and lit it on fire and sealed it into your belly. And then all of a sudden, these young guys started coming with their t-shirts that said the sons of thunder. All night long, I've been feeling I'm with the sons of thunder. It's the new breed. It's the voices of thunder. It's the evangelists. The prophecy of James Ryle that the musician evangelists would be coming and they would reap a harvest far greater than the Beatles. And stadiums would be filled. So, Father, I loose this prophetic sound. I say the sons of thunder are coming forth all over the globe in the name of Jesus as a father. Lord, we live to give birth to Elisha. Come, Elisha. Pour the Spirit of the Lord of the Jesus fast. Moses fasted 40 days and gave birth and had a spiritual son named Joshua, which means the Lord saves. Elijah fasted 40 days, had a spiritual son named Elisha, which means the Lord saves. And John the Baptist fasted his whole life to bring forth a double portion son named Jesus, which means the Lord saves. Could it be the double, the fasting fathers are bringing forth a double portion, signs and wonders. I prophesy, I say the sons of thunder arise in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, God. I'm going to pray real quick. Uh, just focus on Jesus. God, I thank you for a divine encounter right now in Jesus' name. Prophecy, dreams, visions, trances, revelation. Divine encounter in Jesus' name. Visions in the night. Revelation, wonders to know your voice. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name, healing in your bodies right now, specifically lower backs, be healed right now. Blood disease, healing across this place. Complete healing in your bodies in Jesus' name. Divine encounter. Encounters. Encounters. Intimacy intimacy in Jesus name I just felt like I was to call this new breed of evangelists these guys that are running the guys that are running from Michael with Michael I just want to I feel like I want to just release this transfer. This transfer of go anoint Elisha. Are there other guys that are coming? Maybe there's other, other young men and women that you feel this, this burning fire for evangelism. You just raise your hands as well. But I'm going to just pray. I've been, I've been feeling like I'm at... A, uh, I, over the last three years, I'm at a Jordan River crossing where John saw Jesus. And he came to the Jordan and there was a transfer. I literally did that three years ago, believing for Reinhard Bonnke's new breed to arise. And Father, right now, I just want to make this transfer here in Houston. Lord, I, I, again, I want to just state my faith that we are in a transfer into Jesus' movement into the Jesus evangelist. The Jesus the evangelist would rise out of the five-fold ministry in the fullness of his manifestation right now. And so, Father, I just pray, loose the sons of thunder. Write it on their shirts. 
inscribe it in their hearts. I loose God this double portion. Elisha, Joshua, Jesus generation. A new breed of evangelists with the spirit of the Lamb on their lives. With signs and wonders. And God, we just release this God to this new army of young men who are hooked with the fathers. That they will not lose this fish in Jesus' name, God. But they just say living God all across this place. Even on God TV all across. Lord, even as Todd White and Azusa release the sound of the evangelist, I release this sons of thunder. Release the sons of thunder. Lord, we declare there's a Jordan crossing right now. There is a transfer. There is one coming, John said. There is one coming. So we say, there is one here. It's the sons of God. The sons of God. I loose this generational transfer right now. I say, Lord, release the Jesus intimacy evangelist, God. And I thank you, Father, for this transfer of faith. The sons of thunder. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray, God, we've heard of the school of the prophets. But I felt like the Lord says that I've raised you up, Michael. Yes, the school of the prophets, but it's the school of the evangelists. <laughs> I see a school of the evangelists. Reinhard Bonnke's had his school, but you're, you're forming a school, not by trying to build a school, but it's a school of friends. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. There's the attraction of Jesus in your life that's bringing these young men, and I see hundreds, hundreds coming to partake in the spirit of Jesus who will release signs and wonders from the spirit of intimacy. Lord, I bless God, Michael, as a son of thunder, Lord. Let his voice, let the manifestation rolling down from his father, from Benny Hinn, mobilize an army of evangelists friends, sons of thunder. I bless them in Jesus' name. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. That stadiums, I dreamed it last night. I dreamed all last night of stadiums and I had such faith for mass awakening last night. And my last dream, I was with Michael Colicoulianus and signs and wonders were breaking out. And so, Lord, I just release this right now. Come on, just lift your hands and say, can we see it? Stadiums where Paul Cain prophesied for days. Nameless, faceless men and women. Lord, miracles happening day, like bringing stretchers, signs and wonders. We refuse to have unbelief. We believe the prophets and succeed. We believe even as I prophesied last night of the waterfall. And here today, God, here today, God, our, my brother is releasing the sound of the Niagara. Lord, we say, I saw that waterfall in Houston, Lord, eight years ago or whatever. Let that waterfall now, let it roll, let it flow. In the name of Jesus, God. Paramount, paramount. Media blasting Jesus everywhere, God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. As Lou was dreaming last night, I friend of mine in Brussels, thank you Lord, just begin to drink all over the room, just begin to drink the spirit. A girl named Frida in Brussels who I met at uh, Reinhard Bonnke's School of Evangelism, she had a dream of us last night and Bill, you just mentioned Reinhard. What I failed to mention in the lobby is that she said, I saw Reinhardt walk into a stadium. And then the scene shifted, and I know what that means, mass harvest. She said, and then you 
you, you began to worship the Lord. That she said, I began to worship the Lord. And, 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 and a one woman in the stadium was touched by the Holy Spirit. She began to shake so violently that people thought it was a little bizarre. But I, I'm ready for bizarre. I don't know about you. I, I'm ready for that. And so people went up to her to help her. And as they got near her, they started falling under the power of the Spirit. And then it swept like a wave through the stadium. And the whole stadium was lit on fire by the Spirit. And all we continued to do was worship Jesus. And uh, Lou, I didn't tell you this, but I was just in Marseille, France, preaching in John Paul II's old tent to all Catholics. And the whole tent got born again. <laughs> Big tent. I mean, pri priests were getting healed. Priests we're getting healed, full vestments, priests getting healed, coming up, testifying, nuns speaking in tongues. Yeah. I, I asked the nuns to lay hands on me. I want what they have, and then they said, well, now you lay hands on us. But I went backstage, and this young girl came up to me. She had been to school in Bethel. She goes, look, I have a word for you. She said, fathers are about to stand with, with you in the movement like you've never seen. She said, and I know you have relationships with fathers, but it's about to go deeper. And she said, and I, I, I know you've, you've, you've been going through, this is a girl in France, man. I'm not, I've never even been to Marseille, France. I mean, I'm surrounded by Catholic priests and nuns, and she's giving me a prophetic word. It was, only God could do that. And she said in a, hold on a minute, she said, and she began to prophesy. She said, you're about to run very closely with Lou Engel. She told me that in the tent. Two weeks, just before Azusa. She said, get ready. He's about to speak into your life and into that movement. I mean, there's so much going on right here. And we're all going to drink of this. It's not about me. You're here. It's, it's going to get on you. It's going to get on you. Wild. Thank you, Lord. Um, I can't share everything. I, I want to, and by by the end of tonight, I will be able to, because there are some major movements that are about to start running together, like America has never seen. I'm telling you, uh, movements that you love, that we're about to join hands with. I can't share it. I'll, I, will do it I will do it in one of the night meetings, okay? But look, Pastor Randy's next. Pastor Randy's going to teach. This is so God. Pastor Randy Needham's going to teach on the glorious church, which is the uniting of generations, the uniting of offices, us coming together. Do you know what? all colliding on the face of Jesus. God is up to something this week. So Pastor Randy's next. Go ahead and take a break. But this teaching on the Glorious Church is going to piggyback everything that we just heard, okay? Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. We'll see you. Look, we will see you at 11 o'clock sharp. So go pray for people. Go find somebody sick around here. I want to hear about some miracles. Be sure to be back here as soon as possible. We will be live at 11. Yeah, Irving, make, give this mic to Irving.
sing with me? Check 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 check
Check, 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 check.
You almost sound like you might be getting ready. That was a quick little break, huh? But are you ready to, for the next session? I know you're almost there, you're almost there, you're almost there. I'm gonna give you a few more seconds, a few more seconds. Some of you shoved a granola bar down your throat. You're trying to get up, get up some air so you can say yeah. Look at somebody and say, are you ready? Just look at them, eyeball to eyeball. You need some human contact. Find somebody else, say, are you ready? Now somebody say, we go from glory to glory. I don't hear you, I don't hear you. Talk back to me, Houston. Come on, somebody say, we go from glory to glory. Stand up on your feet, come on, stand up on your feet. Now let me hear you open your mouth and give God a shout of praise. We bless you, Jesus. Come on, let me hear you open up your mouth, open up your mouth. And give God a shout of praise. We bless you, Jesus. We want him to do what he wants to do in here. Come on, come on. We want him to do what he wants to do in here. Would you put your hands together as we're led in worship by Pastor Chris Clemens. And I sing praises to your name. Praises to your name, a name that's so much higher than all names. I give honor to your name. All
So Father, we pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation that Brian talked about, counsel and understanding would flow in this session, that what Pastor Randy releases, that we would have the revelation to pull it in and to see your divine blueprint. Come on, ask him for that. I know this doesn't sometimes sound like the most exciting stuff, but trust me when I tell you, this is about a habitation. Lord, release the blueprint yes. so that we can tabernacle with you in visible corporate glory. Walking in the garden with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Come on. Yeah. All right. Why don't you have a seat? It's such a joy to introduce Pastor Randy. It feels so weird because this is his church. So I feel like I shouldn't be doing this. But I wanted to do, uh, just wanted to be faithful to the Lord and honoring Pastor Randy and Miss Lucy for loving uh, us, Jessica, myself, our whole family, and, and our ministry. Uh, as I said last night, it's so rare to have a church partner with you. And just do this together, which is really the new wineskin. As I think we heard that today, that God is merging offices and generations and fathers and sons. And 
even in the back, to hear how Therese was speaking as a motherly voice. Uh, we all need each other, don't we? And so I felt for, and Brian and I have talked about it, my brother and I have talked about it, I felt like there's been this, this uh, wis hear what I'm trying to say, because spiritual things are difficult to articulate at times. So help me, Lord. But I felt like there, I've been feeling that there's this wisdom that's been available, that God is wanting to release uh, into his people so that we can walk with the Lord actually live with and walk with the Lord. I don't mean thinking about the Lord only. I don't mean the concept of the Lord. I mean actually walking hand in hand with Jesus. That's the church's inheritance. And so what pastor is going to release, I know, is part of what I've been sensing. Like the Lord's had something in his hand he's trying to give to us. And so I pray that's released this morning. I want all of you to stand and, and honor Pastor Randy. Thank you, Pastor. We love you. Love you. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. Let's bless the Lord. Give Jesus praise. We love you, Jesus. Lord, just thank you for releasing deeper measures of your glory and your image and that spirit of wisdom and revelation. And Lord, also, I just thank you for that prophetic waterfall that's flowing in this place. So just keep flowing like a mighty river. And we will be just washed, Father, just farther down the stream, just carried farther, God, in excitement, passion, beauty enthroned with you god just thank you i thank you that there are angels that are moving around this room i just thank you god that there is doors that are opening in the realm of the spirit god i just thank you that you have gathered us lord and in your you put a banquet before us father that we are feasting on and this is just there have been such beautiful courses and we just thank you for this course from the holy spirit from the Holy Spirit, from the heart of God. And we have ears to hear. You said, let him that has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And Lord, we thank you, God. Every hindrance to hearing the voice of God, Lord, is just removed. And we just thank you for the liberty of the Spirit to speak that which glorifies Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, what an honor to, to be at a conference in your own church and you didn't have to travel anywhere. <laughs> a lot of my traveling is really long distance, and so this is really, really nice to be here and to have such wonderful people and real people and authentic people. Uh, and, and so thank you, um, Michael, Jessica. Thank you, guys. Lou, I, I just got undone last night. How many of you guys are still? I just, uh, man, I mean, it was like a heavyweight guy up to, whoa, you know, and just like landed blows in, the, in your heart. And those things, you say, well, you know, just even, you couldn't even take notes, you know. It was just like the notes was being, you know, the Holy Spirit's just riding on your heart. And those things are going to continue to come, come forward in the days ahead and in, in the time ahead. And so... Uh, and then Brian, awesome, and I was getting revelation even just sitting here, and now this, this revelatory thing is just messing me up up here. I don't even know what to do right now. Just, I just gonna, I'm just going to get some Kleenex in a minute and blow my nose, and somebody bring me some Starbucks. And uh, I mean, I just want to hear what God has to say. I, I really do. And, uh, and I know that's why you're at a conference in a, in a meeting like this. I, I said this before, Michael. I really believe there's more of a feeling of a movement of evangelists and a movement of something authentic than just a conference. I think we're kind of conferenced out. We just need the purposes of God that we're all running with and running with in unity. And I really admire that about Jesus' image 
uh, that it's, it's big enough to make room for the body of Christ, to run together and people. And, and I just also, you know, you, uh, we would have paid you big money. We didn't tell you that. Just to have more of Jesus' image deposited in the church. So we're a little selfish in what we're doing, honestly, because there's just going to be another deposit of Jesus in here. And, you know, I love this about the evangelist. I love this about the, if I maybe could have gone, if I could have had a choice in what I was going to be, I think I would have told the Lord, let me be an evangelist. Because to me, when that evangelist anointing kicks in, is absolutely the most beautiful thing. And the reason the church needs the evangelist anointing is because it's always teaching us to love the world. It's always teaching us to love people. And it's always bringing in, and, and also they walk in that realm of miracles, signs, and wonders. It's just like, it's just what they do. They can't, you know, winning, winning the lost. My spiritual father, Pastor John Osteen, used to say that signs and wonders and miracles and healings is a dinner bell for the world. You know, you know what dinner bell is? It's kind of dating myself here. But like an old ranch, you know, when they would ring it and the, and the work hands would come in from the field, that means dinner's on the table. Well, when Jesus starts healing people that don't even believe in him, they come running to Jesus. It's the dinner bell to the world for people to be saved. And God's fixing to ring the dinner bell. That's what we're hearing with signs and wonders and miracles. And Jesus is going to be so attractive to the world. He's going to be so, it's so attractive to this world. You know, the last move of God, uh, the revivals. And I think there's students of revival in this room. And I've, I've studied them. And they, they, they're wonderful, but they've, they've died. They, they fall off. One reason is you get tired. I mean, you just go and go and go and go and go. And, and you've got to constantly be filled and your physical bodies, that's, that's one, of the, one of the things that happens. But, but, but in this last move, I, I felt the Lord spoke to, uh, spoke to us, and, and I'm sure I'm not the only one saying this. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, it says, repent. It says they're just turn, turn, turn. And I'm going to talk to you about what we kind of turn to. Because, I mean, I wish I would have thought of this. I want to steal that so bad right there. I want to make that our church logo right there. Isn't that the coolest logo? It is so awesome. And, and it, you know, to turn. And it's not just turning from what you're thinking. It's not even just changing your thinking. Some of the time we say repentance is like, okay, I'm just going to think differently. No, no, no. It's not even thinking differently. It's, it's not thinking. It is turning to the face of Jesus and lining up with the face of Jesus in the image of God. That's true repentance. And so God's going to bring people in this last move to the image of Jesus. They're going to have to see the image of Jesus. And one of the things is I talk about the glorious church here today. The glorious church is to represent an image as a dressed bride, as this bridal glory dressed in an image of her Savior. And, and that clothed with His glory. And so when people turn it's to see the image of Jesus and you know somewhere along the way we we got to thinking just being being cool was enough or 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 I've heard this analogy before being the Lexus in the showroom to where everything just looks perfect and the church looks perfect and everybody looks perfect and everybody's got designer this and that. But I don't think that's what, what, what God's looking for. I mean, Hollywood can do really, really cool stuff, but it's not all authentic. You know what I'm saying? And so in this last movie said, return to the image, repent, turn to the image of my thoughts, of my face, of who I am. And times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord until there's a restoration of everything. Amen. And so it's times, well, I, you know, I don't know how many times I had studied that scripture. I, I was pastoring in a little church in Utopia, Texas. That's a real place. It's not a city, but it's a real place. And we were just... You know, and you're going to learn all roads go through Utopia. They really do. And, uh, and we were there, and I had this heart for the world, and, 
And I was just, you know, I'd been there seven years in this little bitty town and, and, and doing it. And I saw a man, Rodney Howard Brown, on television. And the next day, I was that morning, it was 1992, I was at Bob Nichols Church in, in, uh, in Dallas, Texas, and began to be touched by the river of God. And ever since then, I became so hungry for the move of God, so hungry for the supernatural. Listen, once you get touched by God like that, you are ruined for just normal church. You are, you are ruined for normal Christianity. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And so, but I, you know, we, we would quote that scripture. But it wasn't until recently that I looked at that scripture and I realized that times of refreshing, if you look at it, it literally means times of revival shall come from the presence of God. That presence, that word presence there means countenance, image, face of God. In other words, the last revival, I believe, is going to be about the face of Jesus. It's going to be a face revival. I don't know any other way to say it. It's going to be an unending move of God that is just, just captured about Jesus' image, about the face of Jesus, and times of revival will come from a presence that is so strong that you begin to see the image of God in your life. You can discern Him. The, the Jews call it the Shekinah glory of God. And it was a presence that was so strong it shined with the countenance of God. And they would follow that. And when they were following the Shekinah, the countenance of God, when they, would, when they were following that presence, that light that was shining, they considered it following the face of God. And that's what happened in Azusa. The Shekinah would come. They would say the greatest miracles would happen in Azusa is when the fire of God would be going up, meaning a fire coming down from heaven. And when the fire going up and the fire coming down, that would be the most notable miracles that would happen in those nights. And people would run into the building and to be in that place. You know, another thing that's really interesting about the Azusa revival, as you study it, is many of the miracles were done by the children or by the next generation. And God's speaking that word to us in this meeting about the next generation that's coming forth. And so times of revival, unending times of revival, will come from a presence that is so strong we can know Jesus. We can begin to discern who He is, the countenance, the face of Jesus. How many of you are hungry? For, for Jesus, just Jesus, more of Jesus. And so uh, just kind of a, a little journey here just for a moment. And I, I don't really want to uh, teach, and I just got th these moments, and I'll give it back to Michael. I just want to share with you because years ago, uh, I was, I w we were starting this church, and it, it had been pastoring. And, and, uh, and as we started, I said, you know, Lord, what is the picture of the church in the Word of God? Because I'm a builder. My background's in building. So I think in, in terms of blueprints and drawings and buildings and, and, and things. And I'm like, again, I, I just said, Lord, I really, I'm going to stand before you. I'm going to give an account on that day. And I really don't want to be embarrassed that we, we built the wrong thing. I'm going to give an account. And there's not going to be billions of people around. And I don't want to hear him say, that was really good, but it's not what it, you were supposed to build. And so I began to seek the Lord. And I did this for years. I just said, God, what is the picture of the local church? And I'll tell you, there are prophetic pictures. And I, I want to just say this. I'm in, love with the, I'm in love with the body of Christ. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love with the body of Christ. I'm in love with the lost. I'm in love with nations. Because that's what the heart of Jesus is wrapped around. And, and I just began to seek him and just say, Lord, what is it? What, what's the picture? And, and I'll just tell you real quickly, I, I won't talk about it, but just so you can go study this later, there are pictures of the church and even the evolution of the church that we're seeing. And we're coming into the final and the greatest phase of the clothing of the glorious church on the earth. It's going to be the best time, the brightest time, the most supernatural time we've ever seen. And let me just say this about harvest, because harvest is a theme here. 
You know, uh, the growing season, the planting season can take a long time. That's why it's an ancient fish. It can take a long time. What Jesus died for thousands of years ago, God's waiting till there's the greatest multitude of people on the face of the earth so the greatest harvest can go to heaven. That's what he's waiting for. That's why he's had long patience for the precious fruit of the earth. That's why he's waiting for it to become ripe and the grapes are going to be bowing low. And when harvest time comes, folks, it just, it just takes a second. It doesn't take long. It's not going to take... It's not going to take all this time. When, when the Spirit of God moves in a nation, we can have the harvest before the devil wakes up. I'm telling you, it doesn't take long. I'm telling you, overnight, Jesus will become a household name. And so you can go through the Word of God. And, 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 and Lou you know, mentioned this last night. When Jacob found Bethel, the house of God, the, the house of God is to be... The, the, the place where the ambassadors of God, the sons of God, it's the, it's the capital of heaven, every local expression of the kingdom. And when he found that place, he didn't even know it existed. And he walked in there and he said, how awesome in this place. Because he went in there, he put his head on a rock of revelation and he learned things he never knew. And he, he began to see a ladder and he began to find his destiny. He began to find his forefathers' inheritance. And he said, wow, this is awesome. How awesome in this place. And he made a covenant with the house of God. He made a covenant with what God was doing on the earth. He said, I'll tithe to this. I'll tithe to this. I'll give to this. As long as this is flowing in my life, I got here. I got blessed more in one night in this open heaven than I have in a lifetime running from my enemies. That's the blessing of the house of God. It's to release blessing on the earth. It's to release people. Listen, I see this happen as a pastor. I see this happen. God, people will come in and they're lost. They're, their clothes are wrinkled. They're, 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 they're living from hand to mouth. Maybe they, they they've been, you know, barely have a place to live in or not have a place to live in. And they come in. They come into that open heaven, the gate of heaven that it's called. And when they walk in and they sit there and Jesus comes in their life, the blessing of God, and you see them about a month later, they'll walk in with a suit and they'll walk in, you know, like this. And they're like, I got things coming. Restoration's happening in my life. I got, I got having dreams, pastor. I'm going to own businesses and all this stuff. It's just the house of blessing. Everybody say the house of blessing. It's the open heaven. Listen, it is the, what do you call it when, the, when you're in another nation and you got the, uh, what is it? The, where does the ambassador live? Embassy. embassy. I'm so sorry. The embassy. You know, listen, if I'm in Moscow and I walk in the American embassy, I am walking on American soil. And I don't depend on the economy of Russia. Or wherever it is. I'm operating on the economy of America even though I'm on Russian soil. I'm still on Russian property. You are in the embassy of heaven. And we're operating on the economy of heaven. And this is heaven's land. Come on, this is heaven's land. That's why it's important for churches to own property. It's a lampstand. It's ownership that Jesus has. And then you see another picture uh, of, the, of the glorious church or the emerging church. And it's the, the, the Shunammite woman. She, she got sensitive to the prophet, to the moving of the spirit. She had everything. She had wealth. She had means. She was probably um, very socially, um, moved in great social circles. And so she didn't need, you know, when the prophet said, can I speak to anybody? She already knew the king. And here she is and she sees the prophet, but she was just hungry. For what God was doing. And so she connected her house to the house of God. And I think, I think maybe in the 80s or maybe in the 90s, as the church, we, we stopped at the image of just being the house of blessing. But God wants to bring us higher because we're also the house of destiny. And it's, it's to release destiny. And here she connects her house and she builds an alia. Just study it out. She builds an alia. It's not like she just built a closet and stuck a little stool in there for the prophet and like, you know, here guy. She actually built a chamber. An alia is where kings would go in the summer 
It was built on the wall over the gate of the city. It's where the transactions of the city took place. And she just was hungry for God. She had everything. And she just wanted to connect her life to the kingdom of what God was doing in the world. And so she built the house of God, connected her house. And so when she did that, she began, the prophet turned to her and said, what is it, the longing of your heart that you've longed for? You're going to have the child. She couldn't even believe it. But when she connected her heart to the destiny of the kingdom of God, and that's the next level we got to go to, not just be the house of blessing. We are the house of destiny for the world. There is a purpose. There is a passion. There is a harvest. There is a calling that we are to step into. And when you connect, neck not just how can I get blessed and that's great I love it I love the house of blessing I love the open heaven I love all that but when you connect your life to the kingdom purpose of Jesus in the earth the dream will come back to your life that you could never accomplish in a lifetime and then we see another picture real quickly of Solomon when the queen of Sheba came another picture of the church When the queen of Sheba came, she was overwhelmed at the house of God and the servants of God and the way they were dressed and the order that was in the house. It was a different economy. How many of you know we're in a different economy in the kingdom than we are in the world? It was a different economy. It was a different way. It was a different way of thinking. And she came with all the hard questions of the world. And she even gave Solomon a gift. But if you read it out, her gift didn't compare to how Solomon was able to bless the world. How Solomon gave her uh, gold and gave her not only the answers of her heart, but gave her the, uh, the treasuries according to his royal generosity. He began to give, or he gave as a king. It's another picture of the church to where we're going to hear the cry of the world, have the answer for the world, and rise up with kingly, generosity and bless a hurting sighing dying crying world and never send the world away never send the world away saying no I can't afford to help you no I can't help you no I don't have it no we will bless the entire world amen Amen. we are to feed them clothe them nourish them bless them we can do anything there is no limitation to please don't wait for money just obey God Obey God. Obey God. Know what he's telling you to do. And he knows how to finance his work. But there's another. There's another picture. And this is what I want to, to just spend this time with. I, I say, God, what is that picture? And the last picture that I want to give you is the picture of the glorious church. And I, 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 a funny story. Some of you may know a, a great man of God. He's an apostle. When we started our church, this was 12 or 13 years ago. His name was Bishop Tudor Bismarck, and he came to our our church, and he loved us, and he did a real strange thing. I'd been praying for several years, asking God about the, show me the blueprint, God. Show me the picture. And so Bishop Tudor Bismarck comes, and and he just does it. I've never had anybody do this, probably never had anybody do it again. He says, all y'all here Sunday morning, Sunday morning church, you know, he says, all you here today, y'all can do whatever you want. I'm not preaching to you today. I'm here to talk to Pastor Randy. And he just talked to me the whole time. Well, he starts talking, Brian, he starts talking about dimensions of glory, atmospheres, what opens up other dimensions. Well, in five minutes, I'm sliding down in my chair because I feel like I've never read my Bible before. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I hope, I hope there's not an open book test or I hope there's at least it's an open book I don't understand a word he's saying he said this he said I'm not going to give you a little milk I'm not going to just give you a little meat I'm fixing to shove a whole herd down your mouth that's what he said to me and I I like I'm the worst pastor I don't know any of this stuff in and so it was a couple of weeks later I want to turn your attention just real quick because I, I want our eyes to see it just for a moment I know it takes a moment to do this, but a Revelation chapter 1. And, and I, we'll just look starting with verse 8. But he said, I was reading I'm in my little New Testament. I was just sitting on my couch about two weeks after Bishop Tudor's been there. And I read these words, beginning with Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. It says, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, 
John, both your brother and companion in tribulation and kingdom patience of Jesus Christ, was on the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. And I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a voice as of a trumpet saying, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches, which is in Asia. See, this was given to the Gentile church. This was given to us. This was given to us in, in our season of what God is doing. And, and he says, to, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And then I turned to see the voice. That's why you can follow the voice of God. You'll find the face of Jesus. You can follow the presence of Jesus, and you'll find the voice of Jesus. I always tell people, just start with what you got. If you got the presence, follow it, and you'll find the voice. If you got the voice, follow it, and you'll find the presence. And then he said, he turned to the, see the voice that spoke to me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and out of the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like flame of fire, and his feet were like fine brass as refined in a furnace, and his voice was the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I read that, it felt like the Holy Spirit took scales from my eyes. It was so evident. It was so easy. It was so obvious. Maybe I was the only one who didn't see it. But the Lord spoke to me and said, that's the picture of the glorious church. I am the picture of the glory that the last day's church will be clothed with. That image when you find Jesus, you find yourself. This isn't some heretical teaching. It's always been God's plan. Do you know the first thing he ever gave man? Do you know the first thing in the garden he ever gave man? He created man and he gave him his image and his likeness. How many of you like it when your kids look like you? I have a new grandbaby. It's just been born. He looks totally like me, totally like me. He's, he is, he's just, he's all me. It's awesome. And actually, you know, here's a cool testimony with this because it was in the first Jesus conference in Orlando, I think it was the first, where Michael spoke a word to my daughter-in-law and to my son and said, don't, don't give up. Was that it? Don't give up that because they'd had difficulty uh, they had one child, but they're believing for another. They had difficulty and some things I won't go into that they'd had a fight. And she had been told in her younger life she could never have children. So she got in the will of God, got connected to the house of God, and the impossible dream began to come to pass. And so Michael said, don't give up. Laid hands on him. Well, um, so when Jesus Conference Houston started yesterday, my first grandson was born that looks just like me. Created. I think it's prophetic. Now, we weren't saying this, but Lou, when, when they would read the Bible and they would talk to, his name is Gideon, when they would read the Bible and talk to him and they would talk about Mary visiting Elizabeth and John the Baptist, he'd start doing somersaults in her womb. So they're thinking there's something evangelistic going on here. I think we had a little evangelist born yesterday. Well, listen, and this is why, and I'll say it because he's not here, but uh, <laughs> he's big. He could hit me or something. No, he wouldn't do that. He's nice. But, but uh, she had a dream before she delivered the baby, and she saw Daniel Kalinda in the nations with his Bible, and on the Bible was a sticker that said Gideon. I just think it's a prophetic sign here that we had a Gideon evangelist of another generation. Come on, somebody. As we say in the South. Isn't that beautiful? Gideon Bible. Always been about winning souls. 
It's just, it's just amazing. And listen, you guys jump in here. Anywhere the Lord gives y'all something, y'all jump in here. But, but um, so, so this, this prophetic thing, this prophetic uh, image, you know, that was, was there. So, so he's like, he looks like me. And, and how many of you know you look like your parents whether you wanted to or not? You're gonna, why? Because their DNA is in you. How many of you haven't even been around your parents for years and your spouse tells you, you did that just like your, my wife tells me, you walk just like your father. And I'm like, stop that, stop that. I don't want to walk like, but I can't help it. Why? Because his DNA is in me. Jesus said, you're going to do the deeds of your father. I got news for you. The church is going to be like its father. You can't stop it. You cannot stop the glory. We're going to be like the image of Jesus is being formed in us. We're being clothed. God, when he created us, he created us in his image. And I like it when they look like me. I don't always like it when they act like me. But, but it's good when we act like him. So we're not only created to, to look like him. We're created to act like him. Do, do what he does. Do the works of Jesus in the world. Amen. And so here's the thing. When, when Adam walked with his father, he really just had one job. He didn't have to be super smart. But, I mean, he named the animals. He did all this. But when he looked at his father, you got to get the picture. When he looked at his father, he saw a flame of fire. From his chest to his loins and from his loins down. So when Adam looked at his father, who he was created in his image, Adam didn't even wear clothes. Why? Because he wore glory. He wore fire. And so when he looked at his father, he looked at himself and saw, oh, that's, that's who I am. In other words, he was defined by the image of his father. He was defined. He didn't have to sit there and be insecure. He didn't have to say, can I do this? I don't know if I can do this. I'm afraid. He just saw his father do it, and he did it. How many of you know when Jesus came, he lived the exact same way? Whatever his father did, he did it. He was just like his father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father, and he walked in the image of his father. This has always been Bible. But when man fell and he sinned, what happened? He lost the blueprint. He lost the image. And man, I think... Besides the sin and the sickness and the disease, I think the real tragedy that came on the human race is that man was no longer defined by a father's love and a father's fire that man defined himself by himself. And his thoughts were within himself. And so he became self-conscious, not God-conscious. And that's what these guys are all saying. Just turn your thoughts to him. It's about the presence. It's about his voice. It's about his face. Just turn to the image. Repeat, turn to the image. Because, because that's, that's the seat the church has in this hour. The Bible tells us uh, in 2 Corinthians, just like Moses beheld the glory of God and he began to shine with the glory of God, the church is seated. We have this position. To be seated and to look at Jesus. It may be through presence right now, but that presence is going to get stronger. It may be through revelation, but that revelation is going to get pure. And behold the face of Jesus and look to Him. And so, so the church is transformed into the same image even by the glory of the Lord. We're not changing without the glory. But when the glory comes, we're changing into the image we're beholding. It's not about what we can do. It's about what we can behold. And we are transformed. Our hearts just change. Our hearts are, are, are overwhelmed. So listen, Moses gazed at God. He sat on the mountain. He gazed at God. Jesus came and he gazed. He would just gaze at him. And there's something about, you know, Sean Foyt was here and he talked about just being a gazing one. And he talked about the power of that, how that you just get in the presence of God so long and gaze at him so much that you begin to see his attributes and then it begins to define you and your confidence and you walk out ready to conquer the world. It's like Lou said last night, you're like, yeah, you get in the presence of God, you're ready to climb the mountain. You're ready to take nations for Him. It may seem impossible, but you become, what is it, so God-confident. 
confident, not self-confident. And so they just gazed, gazed at him. And I, th- I think this last revival will be maintained by a face revival beholding the image. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, and you, you know, I, I think people can take this and do more with it. And other prophet people, prophets can take it. And I, I hope they do. Because, you know, some of the time the Lord calls you to something. I don't know why I can't get away from this. I just can't get away from the glorious church. I can't get away from the destiny of the church. I mean, and I sit there and say, it's like trying to do something you've never done before. It's trying to talk about something you've never fully understood before. But you can't get away from it. And, and just keep going for it. You know, people tell us you can't have revival in the local church. I don't believe that. I refuse to believe that. The local church is of Jesus. And you, we just got to know how to gaze at Jesus and, and have a life-giving, glorious revival that's just about Jesus. It's not about other things. It's just about Jesus. It's about lives. It's about souls um, being transformed by the glory of God. And so he said to me, this image of me, is what I'm clothing the church in. And this is what belongs to the glorious church. This is your destiny. This is your image. This is your bridal clothing. He's not coming back. You know, a lot of people have such a bad image, bad attitude about the future and the destiny and the, and the, and the, the church is this bride of Christ, this bridal glory of, uh, of Christ that we'll be clothed in. He's not coming back for a toothless bride in sackcloth and ashes. He's not. Listen, how ugly is that? Poor Jesus. Poor Jesus. Listen, when I I went to Bible school, they taught me that all the messages in uh, in the book of Revelation, the seven messages to the church, were dispensational. And therefore, the last one to the church at Laodicea was the church I was called to pastor, the end time church. And I'm like, well, that's like being the captain of the Titanic. Why do I want to do this? This is the worst ever. I don't want to do this. And I, but something about the scriptures said that can't be right. That can't be right. And I didn't fully understand. I knew it was wrong. Because the Bible says he's coming back for a glorious church without spot and without wrinkle. Amen. A church that's in love with him. You don't marry somebody you're not in love with. Coming back for a church that's in love with him, in love with his presence. A church that's just captured by the bridegroom, captured by him, captured by his heart. You know, they just get lost in time. We're not looking at our watches. We're looking at a face. And so, you know, he said, every one of these is an attribute. The description of me is an attribute of the anointing that I'm putting on the church. And you can go, you can go study it. You can, I don't have time here in this session, but you can go look at it. You can go read those letters to the churches. And you can, you can see them. And you can see that every one of those letters begins with an announcement about who he is. Who he is is what he's calling you to walk in. It's what he's calling you to be. So he says to the first church, "I'm, I'm the God who's present. So in love with you, I'm walking in your midst. How many of you think if you go to church, you ought to go to church with Jesus? How many think we shouldn't be satisfied if Jesus is not walking up and down the aisles? And he's a church of presence, a place, it's a God of presence. He's a very present God. And, and then, you know, he talked about not being afraid because he's overcome death and being full of faith. And then he talked about fire, his eyes of fire, his countenance brighter than the sun. His eyes like fire, the fire of God. Listen, we can't win the world without the fire of God. You, 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 we can't reach the world. The, the, the fire, like, like Moses had an encounter with the fire and he delivered a nation. He saw a burning bush. And then Jacob prophesied about that in Deuteronomy 33. He prophesied about the burning bush that Moses saw. And he said, it will come on Joseph. 
And Joseph will be blessed with every good thing in heaven and every good thing on earth. And he'll be crowned with that which dwelt in the burning bush. In other words, the fire of God is a crown that sons of God wear in the earth. When we walk through the earth, the church is to be crowned with the fire of God. It's the fire of God, the, the fire of God that gives us authority in the nations. We can't win the nations without the fire of God. I challenge you to do something. Go look at Reinhard Bonnke's uh, te his teachings on, on uh, a YouTube or something. He talks more about the fire of God than anybody I've ever seen. Why? Well, and you know what? He's led more people to Jesus than anybody I know. Do you think there's a coincidence the fire is also our authority among the nations to walk and to release the miraculous realms of God? Amen. So here's, I just wrap this up. Because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 19 that the testimony of Jesus, actually it says we've been given the testimony of Jesus. And I want us to think about this just differently for a moment. And then I'll close with another quick thing. But the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I love that. I love the teaching. I, I, we, we, that's one of our core values here is to live in, the, live in the testimony. We've been living in the testimony of Azusa and our faith is just... Whoosh, living in the testimony of dreams and visions and... What, was the, what were those crackers? Triscuits. Triscuits. We're living in the testimony. <laughs> How many of you had dreams last night? How many of you had dreams? Lift your hand around the room. Look around the room. Look around the room. We're just living in the testimony. And that testimony is saying that's who Jesus is and he's going to do it again. He's going to do it for you. You don't have to be a great preacher. Just collect other people's testimonies. It doesn't even have to be your testimony to work. Just tell other, tell other people's testimonies. I'm going to tell Lou's testimonies. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about the bridal glory and the waterfall and everything. It's just grab it. Grab it. It's the testimonies of Jesus. Amen. But, but let me take it just one step further. Everything, when we look at him and his testimony grows in our heart, when that presence is on our life, just the presence of God. You know, we have people from many walks of life just pull in the parking lot and they start shaking. I've had people walk in and say, Pastor, Somebody's getting delivered in the parking lot. I'm like, well, God started it. He'll finish it. Glory to God. <laughs> I mean, it's just like. <laughs> but what is it? It's the testimony of presence of Jesus. There's nothing like it on the earth. The testimony of his presence every time we come together. Don't, don't settle for not having the presence. It's the, it's the treasure. So what am I saying to you? If the presence is missing. The testimony of Jesus is incomplete for the world to see. If the fire is missing, if the fire is missing on the bride, because it's, it's the bride, the world's going to look at us and the testimony we carry, they will begin to see Jesus. It's not about us, it's about Jesus, but they'll begin to discern Jesus. So when the presence is there, there's a testimony about Jesus that they long for. The real Jesus. I've never found anybody that doesn't want the real Jesus. I've never found anybody who doesn't, doesn't want the authentic real Jesus. So that presence, the fire is a testimony. His voice, His voice belongs to us. It's part of the glory of God, that voice that belongs to us. And, and when that voice is thundering in our midst, when everybody's... Hearing and saying, this is what God's saying. And we're walking, we're walking with what He's saying burning in our hearts. We're going on this adventure of following the Word of God. There's a testimony that begins to sound. There's a sound. How many of you know there's a sound when an open heaven comes in a room? How many of you know there's a sound when glory is filling a place? How many of you know that there's a sound when people's hearts are responding to God? There's a sound of heaven. And without that, our testimony is incomplete. It is 
The testimony of Jesus. That's what, Paul, that's what John was on the Isle of Patmos for. The testimony of Jesus. The complete testimony of Jesus. And God wants to clothe us with His image so that when the church, the glorious church, rises up and harvest comes, there's a sound that sounds like Jesus, looks like Jesus, does what Jesus does. I was being interviewed in, a, in, in a Honduras, a nation we have churches in, and things are happening there. It's amazing. And I, I was just being interviewed, and, and I was talking about the glorious church. I can't get away from it. I don't know if anybody wants to hear it, but I was talking about the glorious church. And this pastor interviewed me on the news, and, and she said, Pastor, you talk about the glorious church. We really never heard anybody talk about this. What are you trying to say? And I knew, you know, he's got a sound bite. I knew I just had a moment. So I said, listen, the glorious church is just a church that walks like Jesus, talks like Jesus, acts like Jesus, and does what Jesus does. Come on. And the more we behold that image, the more... We walk in that image. That the mystery is, and I don't, maybe these guys can explain it. I don't know how it works, but when you behold him, you become like him. When you behold him, you see who you are. You can't know who you are, but beholding him. The mirror you look at is not the mirror on the wall. It's the face of Jesus. And when you see the face of Jesus, you find your identity. Amen. Amen. And so God is moving and in this way, and I'll just say that it's, it's so generational what God's doing in the, in the church. And, and I'm, I'm out of time, and I'm going to turn it over. But, but this word of generational fathers in the house releasing the destiny of the house that's been built in generations past. Please, everything we do must be generational in this hour. Everything we do must live for generations to come. It's bad stewardship. Everything we do must build an image of Jesus that the world can see a complete testimony of the beauty of Jesus in everything we do around the world. It's the heart of the Father that's being released that's going to call the sons and they're going to walk together in the house. And they're going to give away destinies and generations and things that were built. And if they don't, if we don't do this, the fish gets robbed, the harvest gets robbed. But if we don't do that, it's like we drop the baton. We can't drop the baton anymore. It's like we drop the baton and the next generation has to go searching in a graveyard among the dead and they have to figure it out all on their own. What could a Lou Engle teach us if he had sons around him about realms of prayer and intercession and things that he could pass the baton to the next generation? I had a dream, two dreams back to back. One, I felt like it was just a vision just in heaven. And I began to see spiritual fathers. And I don't really want to say their names because I don't want it to sound like name dropping. But I began to see generations. Uh, three of them are still on earth. And f four of them. Well, the, the four of them. Well, the, the, the. Let's see. The three. Three were on uh, in heaven and the others were on earth. And I was there with blueprints, and I knew I was there to either tear down the building or remodel the building. And when I looked at the building, I saw these spiritual fathers sitting on platforms. But I wasn't interested in them. I was there. I'm a builder. I was looking at the building, and I didn't like the building. It was massive. It had green walls, hunter green, like, walls. It had like gold molding from the 80s, like crown molding. It was out of date. The seating was wrong. And the fathers were just sitting up at the front, and there was, wasn't that many people in front of them. Three of the four were in heaven already. And, and I was looking at it, and I said, I'm going to tear the building down. 
And at that moment, a prophetic woman appeared on my right shoulder. And she said, really? Because I knew she had a concern about the church. She said, really? You're going to tear it? We got to tear it down? And something made me look back. And when I looked back, I saw the fathers. And I said, no. We don't need to tear the house down. We just need to change the language. We need to change how it's finished for the next generation. And when I walked out of the building, a man walked up to me. And our, our young adult ministry is called 232. It's about a revival generation, raising up a generation of revivalists for the next generation in, in nations around the earth. And God's doing it. When I walked out of the building after seeing that vision, a man walked up to me well-dressed in a blue blazer. I remember he had glasses on. He walked up to me and he pointed at me, pointed at me and he said, What are you going to do about 232? What are you going to do about the next generation? And I realized then that God was saying the house that he built was built by the fathers. Don't tear it down. Take the destiny of the former generations that have been built and put it in a language for this generation and pass it off to the generation that it's to come so we pass the baton and we don't waste the time and we don't lose the harvest that's there. And, and Lou, I, I just respect you and I would never overstep or anything, but there were six of these fathers. And one was about healing. One was about faith. One was about the glorious church. One was about blessing. One was about evangelism. One was about the supernatural move of the Holy Spirit. But I just believe you're a seventh father in the house with a house of, re of revelation, a house of intercession, a house of anointing and dreams and visions and intercessions that, that God's giving you a house that he's built. And you're going to have a language for the next generation generation and and the thing about a father is when he speaks son's hearts awaken ears open and you're going to sound a note and you have this is nothing new you've been doing this these generations sitting here you've been doing this but that that's a house that's going to pass to the next generation hallelujah it's a generational house thank you jesus We want to stare at you. So open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Nobody really knows why that's our logo. Uh, a lot of people have ideas, obviously because it's about Jesus and his face, and we want to see the image of Jesus in the lives of people, but there's a deeper reason. It's because when I close my eyes, I would see that image branded on my heart and it's that I, every time I'd close my eyes I'd see the shadow of his face it, there was this inner communion that was birthed years ago and, and uh, as we wait in the fire of the Lord that image it, it, it's, it becomes more clear and to me it all comes back to his face The Bible says, well, I don't have time. Just listening to the Holy Spirit. I want you to lift your hands for a moment. I felt led to do this earlier. I'm going to release the, the, the impartation right now of the gift of the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits. Uh, and when you walk out of here and you go to, to uh, lunch or wherever you're going to go, God's going to speak to you about these people. And this is what I want you to do. When God talks, I want you to step out. I'm going to ask the Lord to reveal sickness, the thoughts of the heart, the secrets of their lives. And I want you to step out. And then I want you to minister Jesus to them. Everyone here, I want you to minister Jesus to them. And then we'll find a way to jam them in here. 
Brittany will have to work somehow figure something out I don't know how we'll do it but I felt that from the Lord Jesus I thank you you told us we freely received and so I freely give Lord now Father release the gift of the word of knowledge released the gift of discernment of the Holy Spirit I release that now into your life just receive it like a child that's all you may or you may not feel anything you may feel it activate even now you as the Lord begins to give you revelation just receive it like a little baby in Jesus name I release it now in Jesus name Amen. 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 Are you happy? Yeah. Wow, what a time. So we're going to break for lunch. Listen, at 2 o'clock, at 2 o'clock, my brother Theo will be here. To, who's leading that session for worship? Rachel will be leading worship. It's going to be crazy. Okay, it's going to be crazy. My brother carries the love of God like few people I have ever met and we need a baptism of love don't we all of us two o'clock we'll see you go eat eat healthy and get people saved and healed okay love you <laughs>